Good morning, traders. Gates W. Adams here. I am your host. Welcome back. Love having you guys here. Uh, we look like we have some excitement in the chat already for today's show. Some of you guys already know what is in store. So first and foremost, as we get started here, before we kick everything off, we're going to be putting on uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the form where you can fill out. We're going give, to give away three Apex trader funding evaluations, and we want to make sure we get you in there. We've got some great content today. And while I'll, I'll try to bring it up here in just a few moments, I don't want to interrupt what we have in store for you today. So make sure you get that taken care of early and let's get rolling. So as of today, now when we talk about traders, traders always have that milestone that they're searching for. And one of the most common ones that I hear is people are going for that uh, $10,000 a month consistency. And that's a great milestone to reach, but it just, what we're going to do today is really paint the picture of what the opportunity is on a much, much grander scale because we have traders on here who are making a few hundred bucks a month. We have traders on here who are making thousands of dollars a month. Today, uh, I'm going to introduce you guys to Vince if you haven't already seen him. He is Apex Trader Funding's first million dollar payee as a funded trader. And uh, he's going to share with us the tips, tricks, and the things that have helped him be continually successful as a trader, not just last year when he hit this milestone, but ongoing as we move forward. So uh, let's uh, just take a quick moment to welcome uh, Vince on today's Trader Bacon Show. Welcome to the Trader Bacon Show, where we showcase everyday traders that are getting funded, paid, and bringing home the bacon. Are you ready? Because the Trader Bacon Show starts right now. Vince. Good morning, Gates. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Thanks you, for having me on. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to have you on. I'm excited to have you here. And you have the uh, chat already buzzing with uh, with some anticipation. So I'm looking forward to what we got going on today. Well, they, they shouldn't set their expectations too high. Well, you know what? Actions speak louder than words. And I think that's why we're all here. <laughs> so... Well, welcome, man. It's 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 great to have you on here. Like I said, I sure appreciate you spending some time with us this morning. And uh, I know we've got uh, a lot of people excited to hear what you had to share with us. But let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what got you to this point. So, um, what first actually got you into day trading? So, I've always been interested in the financial markets, and early on, I'm talking 10, 15 years ago, I started studying stocks and options, and never had much success. Um, when the futures markets um, were a thing with the prop firms, I really got intrigued with that and um, switched to trading different prop firms. When Apex started in late 2022, I joined them. And uh, I like the binary movement of the futures markets. I don't like the time decay on the option side. Right. So futures became my thing. So it's just been an intense fascination with the financial markets. That's kind of driven me to the, the point I'm at. That's that's awesome. Now, um, this is not all that you do, though, right? I mean, as, as successful you are as a trader, you, you have your hand in a few different pies, right? Right. Yeah, I have multi other business, um, ongoing business ventures overseas in Asia and also stateside. So this is just a piece of that pie. It's becoming a larger piece of the pie, and 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 I'm glad that it is. Well, and the reason I ask that is because what I've found, uh, at least in with the people that I've spoken to, is that a lot of the success as a trader comes from that success mindset. And uh, a lot of times people who are successful in other arenas find themselves having an easier time being more successful in trading and vice versa, which means that traders that find themselves becoming successful as traders can bring that to other areas of their lives as well. So yes, I think for sure. Tremendous value, tremendous value. So, um, so obviously, uh, options have uh, have the time decay, the theta, and all that. So, so how did you actually work your way directly to futures? I think the option side of things taught me a lot because, from a charting perspective, and how I set myself up each day, that that's never changed from an options perspective to a futures um, perspective, and. Um, I was actually doing options and doing okay. However, there were some of those things, like I mentioned, like the time decay that were always challenging for me. And I thought, you know, if I could get into some sort of just binary movement where I could enter and um, profit, that's right. where I wanted to move. And so that's when I started to study the future side and, and realize that was exactly what I was looking for. So I still do some options trading. Um, I got into Nadex early on. 
but primarily now it's I'm, I'm 99% futures. Right. Right. And, uh, uh, so, so I, you know, I just, I just find it interesting because there's so many different formats that someone can take to move into the world of trading. Um, and, and sometimes there's a lot of correlation between one instrument and another. Did you find a lot of similarities in terms of the way that you traded or what you looked for when you were trading options versus futures or were they very different for you? Uh, no, a lot of similarities. In fact, I still, when I trade futures, I still a lot of times look at the cash instrument of those futures. So I look at the SPY and look at the Qs when I'm trading in Q. Um, so I still see that there's still correlation between those two. And again, like I said, from a charting perspective, it's all the same. Right. So if you understand how to chart the Qs or the SPY, you know, it's going to, it's going to correlate very well over to ES and to NQ. So. Awesome. Awesome. And someone asks, who is Vince? Vince is the million dollar day trader. Uh, as you can see on his name there, uh, you can check him out at the million dollar day. Uh, I'm sorry, at million dollar day trader dot com. Uh, he is the uh, first trader with Apex Trader funding to be paid out over a million dollars and uh, still counting. So uh, anyway, just wanted to address that. That's fantastic. Um, so what what? Uh, we obviously, we obviously talk about the fact that you hit that million dollar benchmark last year. Um, when you hit that, now, now you've been trading for a few years now. What is it like for you as far as your progression into trading? Do you make a lot of changes? Do you stick with a similar uh, format? Are you, are, are you currently uh, consistently evolving or do you stick with what works, with what's been working in the past? The fundamental of what I do has not changed in the last two years. Um, I still, I still do the same things that I was taught early on. Um, it's a creature of habit, probably a, a large on a lot of that. I do. I am a kid in the candy store when it comes to new play toys and trading. So if I see something on the market, if I see a new indicator, I've always got to download it just to see what it does, and try to understand it. Um, I guess the th my thirst for knowledge goes quite deep in the trading markets, and I like to understand every indicator, every you know, order flow, market profile, Fibonacci. There's, I'm, I'm deeply interested in, in everything and how it can work together. So as new things come out, I'm always, I'm, I'm always downloading new things to try. So, but fundamentally I have not changed in the last two years as to how I set up each day to begin my trading. Well, and I know some people are chomping at the bit here to find out what it is that you do that has gotten you here. So uh, if you're uh, if you're uh, down for it, why don't you show us, you, you talk about your setup. What does that setup look like for you when you're getting prepped to trade? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so you can see here I have NinjaTrader is my, my base platform. However, we're going to get to that after a little bit. So what I do every night, a great day trade, a, a, a great trading day starts the night before. So the night before, I actually go into, I still use Thinkorswim a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I'll go into Thinkorswim and actually, um, let me pull this down here. And I actually look at higher time frame profiles. And these are Fibonacci levels and things that I get from chart pros. Mm -hmm. Tom Winterstein and Mike Perigo over there are some of the best people in the industry when it comes to Fibonacci levels. So I start to look at some of the higher time frames and I look at the Fibonacci levels and see how those things are, are lining out. And I also go in and look at the previous day's value. So I'm a big market profile guy. So if you look here on this chart on the market profile, you can see the value areas. So this would have been Friday's session. Okay. So the, the box here would have been Friday's value. This is the Globex session. I always separate my Globex sessions out from my regular trading hours. The previous day's value is always a significant play for me. So you can see here where the, on Thursday night, this would have been Thursday's Globex session. Mm -hmm. We we actually opened below Thursday. So when we open below value, that there's always an opportunity for us to trade up into value, up into Thursday's value. And you can see when we opened on Friday, it's exactly what we did. Mm -hmm. We had strength in, in the pre-market. And as we pushed up into Thursday's value, there's an 80% rule that comes into play that says that we could fill clear to the top of Thursday's value. And on Friday, we actually did that. If you look at Friday's value area, we traded into Thursday's value area, but not only did we fill the top, we exploded out of the top. Right. Tremendous, tremendous trade. So what I do every night, I go into my charts 
and I mark I start off on a daily time frame. If you come down here to this chart here, I look at daily time frames. These are significant. Another great example of this is if you look, here's today's candle. This here long green candle was Friday's candle. Mm -hmm. And then if you look here, this was Thursday's candle. And if you go back about a month previous, we had established a level where the market had started to come down off of. Right. We came back up through this level and we tested this repeatedly on Friday before we broke through it. We kind of come back down today and retested that level. If you look here, those are significant levels. So I start off on daily time frames. I mark off all the levels on daily. I go to a hourly time frame. I mark off all the levels on an hourly time frame. I also pull in. I still trade Sniper, and so I pull in all the Sniper charts. And so Sniper, what Sniper does for me, Sniper taught me order flow very, very well. And the, the, the deal is with Sniper is when you use Sniper or you use these levels in confluence with these higher time frame draws, that is where you can really, really improve your, your trading. And by that, I mean, I only trade when I'm when the price action is moving around significant levels. If it's not moving around significant levels, I'm not going to take the trade. Right. I have to have price action moving around significant levels. There's a popular saying, don't monkey in the middle. And if we're not by a significant level, I'm not taking the trade. The other thing that, I'm, that I do, and I'm just loading this now, is I am a, a big bookmap user. And the thing I like about bookmap is I like to be able to see the liquidity zones. And so as you, as you build out liquidity on bookmap, you can see where the liquidity is parked. And when you combine bookmap with higher time frame levels, so you can see where liquidity is parked, it can add significant, significant um, relevance to certain areas. So for example, if I were to go to this daily time frame, we're coming up here on a, on a, on a pretty significant level here. So around 50, 15722 on NQ, I'll start to look to see what we're building out liquidity wise. Right now, those are the levels that I would be looking to take trades around. Here's another level I'd be willing, I'd be looking to take trades around. And part of the reason why I switched how I trade, I switched just a little bit from the perspective that I didn't want to be in front of charts all the time. I actually wanted to be able to take a step away and only come back when price action hits significant levels. So a lot of times I set audible alerts at significant levels, and when price action hits it, then I start to take trades. Now, when I actually take the trade, I have three different charts set up. I trade off of five minute, I trade off of a chart using Renko bars, and I trade off of a chart using tick. Okay. The reason why I do that is every day is different. Mm -hmm. There's some days where Renko bars just make more sense to me. There's some days where a five minute just makes the most sense. And um, so every day is a, little, is a little unique, but when I enter, as soon as we get around high confluence zones, that's when I start looking at the five minute charts to understand what's happening at those levels. Gotcha. And then we have the question in here, and I think that this actually uh, works really well here. What, tip, what time frame, what, what time of day do you typically trade? Uh, considering that you don't necessarily have to be there every minute staring at the charts when the trading day is, is on. Do you, do you leave it on all day or what, what does that look like for you? So I leave charts on all day. However, so market opens 930 Eastern. Mm -hmm. I trade typically from 945 Eastern to 11 o'clock Eastern and that's it. Okay. I no longer trade the lunch hour and I don't trade in the afternoons. My, my win rates down significantly in the afternoons. It's just not worth it. So I catch the early morning intraday trend that, NQ usually establishes, and again, look at today. We had the same thing today. We've got a nice intraday trend going on, um, and that's what I catch, and, and then I'm out. So, okay. so usually out well before noon Eastern. So you've got a couple hours maybe that you're at least re reasonably close to the charts, uh, ready, to take, ready to take a trade. Do you take a, do you take a high volume of trades, or do you take larger trades but less of them? It, it depends on on the the confluence that I have on the chart. So there's some days where you can enter on some, some so, you know significant confluence, and you can catch a trend trade and stay in that trade. There's other days where I may have been a little late to the party, tied up with other stuff, 
Mm -hmm. And then I have to end up, you know, getting in at a later, at a later trade. So, um, it, it depends on where I got in at on the day, but I usually try to, to minimize my trades and maybe take 10, 12 trades a day. And typically those would be, uh, anywhere from five to 10 point runs. Gotcha. Uh, it, now are you looking for a specific target size when you, uh, when you look for a trade? No, I'm typically not. I, I've said before that I would rather enter a trade a hundred times and get my stop and profit to protect my downside than let myself hit a five point stop three times. And that's just my mentality. And so I still tend to trade with pulling my stop into profit just as quickly as I can. So I typically run a 40 tick stop. Okay. And as soon as I'm 40 ticks into a trade, I'm pulling my stop up to protect that downside. Got it. So, so you're looking for at least a 40 tick move. I guess it's just as a base before you, uh, before you move into a trade, right? Right. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and then, uh, so that, that risk is always going to be that same, that, that same 40 tick. It is. However, I, I, I see a lot of traders out there where I feel like they stick to their stops a little bit too much. The market changes. And so if you're in a trade and, um, you know, news breaks, whatever it is, I've seen traders that they continue to hang tight to their stops. I don't, I, you know, stops are movable, move them, um, right. protect the, protect the profit. If you get a little bit of a spike, move it up, take the profit, walk away. Um, I don't, I don't hold to my stops. Like I said, I, I'm always moving them. And there's sometimes I'll enter a trade where I, I kind of second guess myself and I just quickly get the stop up and protect that downside. But I'm always in downside protection mode. And I learned that from the trailing stop at apex, which incidentally <laughs> taught me how to take profits and sure. uh, was a good thing for me. So I'm always protecting that downside. That's uh, that's I, I think sage advice for everybody is, is you know, you've got to know where that risk is, you know, that you're willing to take. And especially as we talk about, yes, that trailing drawdown, um, it, it's one of those things that that, you know, while there's the uh, the occasional complaint on it, I think that for traders who embrace it, it makes them better quality traders. Now, that's my opinion. I think uh, I think that the uh, I think it's valid, but nonetheless, um so now is there a specific, now are your entries somewhat subjective or is there a specific trigger that you're going to see that's going to put you in a trade? I want to see respect of significant levels. And so at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a level trader and those levels can be, you know, previous days highs. They can be monthly highs. They can be um, previous day value. They can be previous day settlement, open, close. They can be a point of control. They can be Fibonacci levels. So when I say levels, these levels entail all sorts of things, but it's always acceptance or rejection of a level that triggers my entry. And that's when I, I start to look at the sniper charts and under, and see what they're showing. And when you see liquidity build out on book map, you see sniper calling for a trade and you're at a significant level, I'll take the trade every time. Wow. So the higher time frame confluence is something that I feel like a lot of traders miss. And I think it's very, very important to understand higher time frame confluence because there's there's significant levels. Um, just because we're bumping up on a high level, you know, take for instance on this daily chart here, we're going to be coming up to a very, very significant level. And I'm just going to see what price action does. Now, I don't watch price action at that level on a daily chart. That's when I'll move to a five minute chart just to see what it's doing. And at the same time, I'm looking at the tick index on the back of my chart here. You can see the tick index. That's simply the New York Stock Exchange um, rising versus falling stocks. And that shows great internal movement of the stocks. I have tick strike up so I can see what the different stocks inside of the indices are doing. This has been a huge help to me. So those are all things that you always want to be watching is to really understand what's happening internally. Beautiful. Now, it, it, because of the numbers, the sheer numbers that we're talking about in terms of your uh, your your payouts with Apex, uh, Gregory asks a great question, and I think the uh, the answer will be surprising to most. How many contracts do you trade? So typically three contracts at the most. Now, I I do allow myself to scale in quite a bit heavier more recently. As I'm in profit, I will scale into more contracts, but on days where I'm a little bit unsure, um, it's one to three contracts. That's just been my staple. It's one to three. And and I'll only scale in with more as I'm confident I can keep that stop in profit and protect the downside. And, and understand I'm well away from a trailing drawdown. 
Sure. So I'm willing to let things kind of work themselves out. But at the same time, profit's profit. End of the day, if I can if I can put some money in the bank, I'm going to take it. Excellent. Excellent. Do you have a daily profit target that you shoot for or do you just let it roll? It depends on the, the confluence that I entered at. So if I feel like I got in on some strong confluence, then I like to you know get my stop and profit and, and like to see it run. Um, I'm busy with, with the multi-businesses I'm in, so some days I can't monitor that, so I have to just exit because if I can't be in front of it, I go ahead and, and check out on that trade. So There you go. And, and I think that uh, it's, for some people, it's, it's, that's a hard and fast number. I've got to be out once I hit this. I don't want to mess up my profits. And for others, it's, it's more of a market read, and I think a lot of that has to do with risk management, risk tolerance, and, and particular attitudes towards, uh, towards trading in general. So Right. That's awesome. So, so now you hit a million bucks. What, what happens to Vince after that? I mean, what is, what does your trading world look like after that? Well, I'm still, I, I've still traded apex. Um, I actually work for apex, so I'm working on internal projects for them and, and, and I actively trade apex. I don't trade as much as I would like to anymore since I'm engaged in multiple businesses, but um, I stay very, very active in that world. And I think going forward, I would like to become more instrumental in helping other Apex traders succeed. That's something that I would like to do. So I'm kind of building out several avenues to do that and um, try to help other Apex traders. Sure. A couple of people are asking what size uh, accounts that you uh, trade with Apex. I've only ever had $300,000 accounts, and I'm not exactly sure why. I actually feel like that the the 150k account at Apex is is a fantastic account. Our 50k account is our most popular account. I would the the 300k account. I've just always thought I would trade the the size that it allows because it allows up to 35 contracts. But I've never traded 35 contracts. Well, the thought being with even with the 25k account, you can trade four, and even if you scale in with the 50, you cut it to 10. So you know, without all the, uh, all the extra work to, to get through the evaluation and get to that, uh, that payout level. Yeah. The secret is, is on that trailing drawdown, you know, we have people that push back on the trailing drawdown. It actually taught, it, it taught me very well. It taught me how to put money in the bank. And I, I'm, I'm an advocate of, of the trail initially. I, I like end of day accounts, but we also have to understand that the trail goes away in PA. Once you build that account out, the trail's no longer an issue in any way, shape, or form. But what it does initially is it teaches you to get that that take profit down there and let it hit that take profit, put money in the bank. And you know, a couple hundred dollars a day when you're first starting adds up very, very quickly. And on all of my 300K accounts, they all started off with two to $300 days. And then you grow them into $1,000 days. And then you grow them into that $1,500, $2,000 days. But they all started with one to $300 a day. Right. And then I think this is a great question. How do you manage your emotions when trades go against you or just in general? You get up and walk away. And, and moreover, you go back and ask yourself why you took that trade. And if you took the trade for the right reasons and it simply didn't work, let's say there was some news break, then, then don't beat yourself up over it. That's the markets. That's, just, that's simply going to happen. But you always have to establish why you took that trade and why it didn't work. Now, I don't, I'm, I don't journal trades, but I always reflect when things work against me and, and understand why that it, the results were, the, were what they were. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, um, at this point, you've got some pretty cool things that, uh, that, you, that you're looking at and that you're doing. And I, I know that they're not completely related to trading, but certainly earning a million dollars as a trader didn't hurt. So you want to share some of, the, some of the fun stuff that you're working on right now? Or that you're looking yes. at, you say? So unfortunately, Vince is a very dangerous person when he's given the liberties to go out and buy other play toys. So I'm an avid private pilot and love to fly. So I'm looking at a couple other things. I've got a um, dark arrow airplane kit. I've built a couple airplanes. Um, I'm going to be a repeat offender on that. <laughs> so looking to do another airplane, possibly looking to, to buy one instead. I don't know where I'm going to go on that. But that's the great thing with with trading is it allows you to to get into some some things that that maybe you didn't feel were attainable and and it provides those liberties and I'm I'm very thankful for that. 
Well, I'm a big believer in rewarding yourself when you have these targets, whether your target is that first, you know, thousand dollar payout or you cross that seven figure mark. Uh, I mean, there's a reason we want to have more money and it's usually so that we can do things or have things or experience things that are important to us, whether that's materialistic or not. I think it's a good thing to continue to keep that drive going and to continue to, uh, to, to move forward so that you don't stagnate, uh, you know, so sure. I, I love the plane thing. I've never, I, my dad was a private pilot, so it, it just brings back some, some really cool memories. And, and, uh, so when you shot me that, that the one that you were going to build the arrow, uh, kind of got a little excited about that. Not uh, something that I'm quite ready for, but it's just great to have these, these little, uh, these little carrots. Yes, for sure. No, you're exactly right. And it kind of gives you, it, when you're trading, you know, kind of set yourself those goals, you know, reward yourself, you know, go out there and whatever it is, you know, if you're into boats or watches or whatever it is, kind of put that little nugget out there and say, you know, when I, when I reach this, I'm going to reward myself with that. And then set it on your desk and look at it every day. Right. And then when you get it, follow through and then pick yourself a new one. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. What else is going on in the world of uh, events? You know, we've got this uh, million dollar day trader site. What's, what's going on there? So I've got, I launched million dollar day trader and this is a site where I'm, I'm just trying to help people. And, um, I release a blog periodically. I've been incredibly busy of late, so I haven't been able to do as much, but people can go there and down below, I actually show everything that I'm currently using. If I show it down here, it means I'm currently using it. Right. And there's some fantastic tools down here. And so I'm not, I'm not showing things that, that I'm getting paid affiliates on. If I'm not using it, this is, these are all things that I use on a day to day basis. If, if you come up to my blog, I'm releasing blogs. In fact, I have tips and tricks, even on trading apex in here. Um, and then mistakes that I've made in trading. So this is something where traders can go and sign up, follow me. And um, I'll try to help as much as I can with their questions. Now, Phoenix wants to know which, uh, it, what if you, uh, if you have one is your mid-year goal for 2024? Um, you know, I think it's from, you know, is he talking in terms of trading dollars? Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm assuming that's the, uh, that's the question. Yeah, no, I'll be back to I'll I'll by twenty mid twenty twenty four I'll do I'll my goal is a million I'll do another million I think I can I think I can do two million in twenty twenty four. Yeah, I think that's a phenomenal target and and I know that you've got a lot of other things going on so uh, not only is that a great growth target when you put that in conjunction with everything else you've got going on which I know is no small task uh, I think that says a lot about the the direction that you're moving so I love that I love that. Um, well, man, uh, first of all, uh, for all of you, uh, we are make sure we are giving away those three evaluations. Uh, not every evaluation is a guaranteed winner, but you can't get a million dollars in payout without starting there. So make sure you get that form filled out. And we're going to give those away here in just a couple of minutes. Vince, what advice do you have for new traders that are moving into the space of funded traders? What, what should they look at first and where, where should what kind of direction should they take? Well, I think it's 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 the education. You know, you really need to sit down and start reading a lot of books. You know, Mark Douglas, Jim Dalton have fantastic books out there. And and don't assume that another trader's trading style is going to be perfect to, for you. You have to go out there and find what works for you. And and that can be a little bit of a difficult journey initially as you go out and research all the different trading methodologies out there. So but that's what you really have to do. You have to do a lot of reading, you know, um, I don't believe in signal services. There's a lot of people out offering signal services. I'm not an advocate of that. I feel like you need to understand why you took that entry. So those are, you know, that's a word of caution for, for that type of mentality. But go out there and start studying Fibonacci. Go out there and study the, the higher time frame draws, the support and resistance, and go out there and, and really educate yourself on, on market profile and order flow and then start putting it all together. And sometimes there's just a an aspect of that that just clicks with with a certain person and and then you can build on that find all the information you can surrounding that uh, that's great advice in fact uh it just makes me think that obviously when we look at your charts there's a lot of stuff going on and i think it bears mentioning and you and i haven't talked about this but i can assume that that all didn't show up at one time right 
no, by no means. And I'm still, like I said, there's there's a lot of these indicators down here on the bottom that I, I put them on just out of more of an interest because I'm just intrigued with what they show. And I also like to see how the different indicators work in conjunction with each other. Um, I'm a big Trade Devils fan. Trade Devils make some fantastic indicators for, for Ninja Trader. Um, they really, really do. And then I also like, there's great free indicators. If you look on my charts here, you can see where I have the green London session. You scroll over, I've got the U.S. session here in blue. That's actually a free indicator online. It's on my website. It's a fantastic indicator to show you kind of what each session did. And as you look back at the day, you can kind of understand, you know, what did Globex do? What did Asia do? What did London market do? And those are all very fascinating things to follow. So there's a lot of free indicators out there that, that really do provide value. That's awesome. And Gregory asks, have you ever failed an evaluation or a PA account? So Gregory, I have... I was the king of failure, I think, at one point. I think I held that title for quite some time. So I held that title until I was I was burning through 2,300K accounts like nobody's business. And I did that right up until the point where Daryl Martin called me. And Daryl says, you know, you're actually a, a pretty decent trader. You just don't know when to stop. And from the day that Daryl called me, I don't, I never busted another PA account. It was just hearing it from Daryl Martin kind of just resonated with me. And I, I took a different approach. I started making those hundred dollar days add up. And I was, I was happy with a hundred to 300 to 500 a day. I was no longer trying to, to hit those home runs. Base hits are fine. That's the thing we need to understand in trading. Base hits are fine in trading. You don't need the, you don't need home runs. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, what, how do you feel about news and FOMC days? Do you trade during that or do you uh, avoid it like the plague? I do not trade around news events. I absolutely avoid them. And if you look on my chart, I actually have news indicators on my charts. You can actually see the lines here indicating when there's upcoming news. And I actually keep the previous news on. That way I can go back when I'm studying charts and I can look at previous movement and understand what news events triggered movements. And and there's news events are changing. Uh, if you look at bond auctions more recently, they've been, they've been causing... The, you know, the markets to move a lot more than they previously did. And so I don't ignore any news events. I don't trade news, but you need to be aware of the news. Sure. That's awesome. Well, folks, uh, as we get here, well, we're running a little over, which I was given a little bit of leeway to do today, which I appreciate because of, uh, because of uh, having Vince on here and being able to share some of these just great insights. And uh, while we get a lot of insights from a lot of traders, uh, I think, let me put it this way. I think y'all listen a little bit better when you got a seven figure payee. Uh, and, and so I'm so grateful to have Vince on the show. Looks like Anna, Tom, and Tanmoy, I'm, I hope I'm not butchering that, uh, are today's winners. So you'll be getting an email in the next day or two with all the information on how to get that set up. Vince, thank you for sharing your time with us today. Thank you for sharing your insight uh, and your wisdom. Um, I, I know that this doesn't go uh, this doesn't come lightly uh, because, as we mentioned before, actions speak louder than words. What you've accomplished in this space, um, and, and I think that it, it bears mentioning that, you know, you talk about the fact that you were the king of evaluations and the king of, of, uh, of blowing PAs and having that moment where, you know, someone like Daryl was willing to reach out to you instead of saying, hey, let me collect more fees from this guy. Let me get him to the point where I know he can be because apparently you were doing enough to where he saw what was going on. And, yeah, no, and, that's exactly right. Yeah. And having yeah. a moment where well, obviously that was a pivotal point because I, I don't know if you guys caught that. How many failures did you have after that conversation? I, I didn't have any PA failures after that conversation with Daryl. And it's sometimes it's just that one little thing. Right. You didn't change yep. your trading. You didn't change your strategy. You didn't change much of anything other than when you stopped. Right. Yeah. No. Prior to Daryl calling, I would be up twenty thousand in the morning, and I'd I'd blow thirty thousand in the afternoon. That was my typical day. <laughs> so well, no longer. I, I obviously it's worked out well. And, and again, thank you for sharing this wisdom with us and uh, and being on the show. Really, really means a lot to me. And I know the uh, we we had a lot of activity. I know you guys had a bunch of questions that didn't get answered. Uh, I appreciate your patience. We can't quite get to all of them, and I'm not going to interrupt them. But but uh, I, hopefully we got a bunch of those done and uh, and answered for you guys. The, uh, Vince, once again, thank you so much. Come back next week. We're going to have a great show for you guys. More to come. Keep checking us out here on The Trader Bacon Show. Welcome to The Trader Bacon Show, where we showcase 